Hi guys, in this video I want to show you how to make like any CD type berry jelly. So this would be like black raspberries, red raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, uh, mulberries, anything that has like a very small seed. Um, so basically what I do is I pick the berries, this is my bucket, and then I go ahead once I pick them, I start filling this bucket up with water and I get any excess grass out of there, bugs or anything. And I just kind of fill the bucket up, I let them kind of soak in there, and I kind of strain with my fingers, just kind of strain the berries, and then just put them over here in a colander, and then I'll kind of give them a good rinse once I get any sort of big chunks out of there. All right guys, so I got all of my black raspberries rinsed off and I've got them in the, cal the colander. And basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna let them sit and I'm gonna drain and try to make sure that any excess water gets off of them. So after they're done draining, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick them in a big bag, like a freezer bag or a freezer container. Actually, um, I'm actually gonna put them in an ice cream bucket. So you guys can do whatever you want. I'm gonna put them in an ice cream bucket. I'm gonna put them in the freezer. So when I do my jelly, I freeze all the berries first, which you guys will find if you don't have a huge berry patch. As your berries come on, they're gonna ripen at different times. So as you go out there, making jelly where you freeze your berries first is gonna be, you'll find the best method because as you go out there each day and you pick what is ripe, then you can put them in the freezer. And then when you have all of the berries picked, then that's where we can thaw them and go to our next step. Also, if you wanna make a pie out of, the, out of these, I would recommend instead of freezing them all in the same container, I would go ahead and portion out what you would need for a pie, and then I would spread them out on a cookie sheet, and then I would freeze them all spread out on a cookie sheet, and then once they're frozen, I would transfer them to you know a cool up container or a gallon a Ziploc bag or whatever you want to freeze your berries for a pie in there. That way they can move freely when you're adding your pie ingredients to them. So once these are all um, basically dry enough, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the ice cream bucket. Hey guys, the black raspberries are nice and drained. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to transfer them over to the ice cream bucket. I'm going to put them in the freezer. Okay, but real quick, I wanted to go over with you why I am freezing these berries. One, I am not going to... Um, the way that I'm going to mill them down is going to be my my strainer that has the berry screen on it. So it's a very, very fine screen that basically makes it to where there's so very few seeds in this jelly. Um, also, freezing it is going to break the berry down just a little bit more and it's going to make it easier to go through the mill. Also, it's not going to be hot going through the mill because if I was to take these on the stove and heat them up and kind of mash them down, I would still have to let them cool and then go through the mill. Um, I know a lot of people will heat them on the stove and then they'll do like a hand mill once they kind of cool down or they'll put them on a cheesecloth and let them drain. I am not going to do this. So I'm actually going to end up conserving energy because I'm going to freeze these and my freezer's already running and then when I'm ready to use them, I'm going to thaw them out and I'm going to run them through my mill. I'm also focusing on whenever I'm ready to use them, thawing them out. You know, when you're a busy um, mom and you work full time, you got to kind of do this stuff when you have time. So that's one of the best things about freezing berries um, is that you can put them in the freezer and take them out when you have time. Like if you have time over the winter and you don't have time over the summer, you just time, have time to pick them. That's great. Um, also, again, I want to touch base with you about the heating them up. You know, berries have a very nice skin on them to where basically that's like juice in there. So what you see that color, you know, these are just little sacks of basically juice in the seed. So unlike like a cherry and a Concord grape where a lot of the coloring just stays in like the kind of the skin of it. Um, to where if you look on my YouTube channel, I have a video how to do like cherry jelly and grape jelly and anything with the pit, how to juice that super easy. Um, you know, we don't really need to let this cook down and let some of those colors get in there. As soon as you just juice this berry, the color is going to already be in there. And then also I want to touch base on, you know, when you have berries, the things again, they're not going to all ripen at once. So if you have a small patch, you may have quite a few berries on them, but you know, you may have to go out there and pick every day for a week, two weeks until you get all the berries. And then in that time, you know, your berries aren't sitting in the fridge again, ripening and not having as good a quality in that time. 
So anyway, so yep, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna transfer these over to the ice cream bucket. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on these berries and I'm gonna put them in the freezer and I will see you back here in a week or so to pull them out of the freezer. All right guys, so I'm ready to can black raspberry jelly. I just took the ice cream bucket out of the freezer and I just went ahead and I set this on one of my um, bowl lids. That way when it thaws out, it'll kind of collect any of the condensation in this lid here and not drip, uh, not condensate too much on my countertop. So it's about 4 p.m. in the afternoon and I'm gonna set this out here all night and I will basically, these should be thought out by tomorrow afternoon and I'll go ahead and I'll run them through my mill here. So right now these are just thawing and we'll see you tomorrow. All right guys, so it has been, oh, let's see, about 22 hours and I've had these on the countertop and they are now all thawed. And basically I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna run them through my Weston strainer. So this is my Weston strainer and I'm gonna explain this to you guys just a little bit. I don't wanna spend too much time on it. But I definitely recommend if you're a canner that you need to get one of these. So basically with the Weston strainer, all of my berries are going to go in the top here. And they're going to come down in this shaft. And this shaft down here spins. And basically there's a little spiral in there that spins. And as it spins, all the, this, it goes through this screen. So this screen is going to prevent any like, you know, inside chunks of the berries or the seeds to come down the chute. And what is going to come down the chute is the juice and all of the seeds and the other stuff that we don't want is going to come out this chute here. And this is going to be the discarded end. So, um, also this is a motor that I have for mine. If you don't want to buy the motor, you could basically have the hand crank that goes in here. So, Basically with the Weston strainer, you get this, you get the chute, you get everything down here and you, it comes with a tomato screen, um, which if you, which the tomato screen, if you guys watch my video for how to make tomato sauce, that'll basically show you how easy it is to put cold tomatoes in the chute and then basically spit them out to make tomato sauce. So it'll come with the tomato screen. And it'll come with the long spiral that's inside here. And then you buy the berry screen, the berry screen the squash screen, um, and then I believe it is the salsa screen. Yeah, the berry screen, the squash screen, and the salsa screen, and then a grape spiral separately. And the grape spiral is just a shorter spiral that if you have things that have a pit like the grapes, um, that's what you can use to run this it through this. So anyway, so basically I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the berries in the chute, and I will be right back. All right, guys, so I just literally set the berries in this chute. Um, I, and then basically the juice right now is just draining. It's not even going yet. And I just have my ice cream bucket set up there at the end to, to catch all the discarded berries. Um, so basically, again, I know I've said this like three times now in the video. This will just show you how it breaks the berries down. Now, when I did f go and freeze these in the bucket, I did push them down in the bucket really well just because I knew I wasn't going to make a pie out of them and they were going to get smashed anyways. But yeah, like I said, freezing it just shows the breakdown, um, you know, how basically instead of heating it and wasting all that electricity, you know, it is starting to break the juice down and or the berry itself. And yeah, so like I said, it's already starting to drain juice, so it's going to get loud here. So I go ahead and then I just turn this on here and I basically just take it and I just maneuver it down the chute. Try to make this as fast as possible. I just want to show you guys how this works. So yeah, you just push the berries down here. Don't try not to push too hard. As you can see, I kind of pushed down there and I just squirted some juice everywhere. But yeah, you push down here. And as you can see, more of that berry juice comes out and then the seeds and that skin and things that we do not want in our berries are coming out the chute there, or in our jelly, excuse me, not the berries, are coming out the chute there. So, you know, if you guys wanted to make jam and you wanted all that stuff in there, all those seeds and all that stuff, you know, you could definitely just blend the berry up, but we're making jelly. I don't want any skin in here, and I don't, I want as very few seeds as possible. And as you can see, we definitely are getting very few seeds. So now it's starting to come down the chute. And that's all the seeds and, you know, skin. Okay, guys, I'm going to finish this up and then we'll continue. 
guys, so I got everything ran through. I ended up breaking down my strainer and getting everything cleaned up here. And I just wanted to show you. So I had one gallon of black raspberries. I mean, I did smash them down there really, really good in the bucket as much as I could. Um, so I got seven cups of juice. And down here in this ice cream bucket, I mean, I have probably about a third of the ice cream bucket, a little under that, of the skins and the seeds that are discarded. So this is what it'll all look like. So this is basically all these seeds and all that stuff that, you know, a lot of people will put in their jam and their preserves, or if you're eating a, you know, black raspberry pie, you know, you get all those in your teeth. That's a lot of the stuff that sometimes just to, that people don't like to eat when they're eating um, berry stuff. So anyways, I just wanted to show you that. I did end up breaking down my strainer just for the fact that, um, you know, when it comes to this stuff, I've had my strainer for literally, uh, like going on, I don't know, 15 years probably. It's getting close. Anyways, so I just basically, you take good care of it. And that's the big thing is getting things broke down, wiped down. That's the main thing. So here I have the screen and I wanted to go over with you guys how I'm going to clean that. Um, but let me get adjusted here and I'll show you guys an easy way to clean that. All right, guys. So I just want to show you with this screen, you get a lot of nasty seeds <laughs> stuck in there and it's very hard to clean. But this is another thing. You, the maintenance on these screens are so important because again, you want them to last. You don't want seeds and stuff um, solidifying in there. And this is the main thing. You know, I'm not somebody that likes to buy a bunch of stuff. And if I um, do have to rebuy it, it better be because it's beyond repair and not on my doing, hopefully. So the big thing is, is you just want to take a knife and go along the outside first and you just want to scrape what you can while the water's running. Um, basically run that under there and then just scrape it. And it looks fine here on the outside for the most part. But then when you look in the inside, you can kind of see too that there are seeds in there. So you just want to kind of go in there and just get in there and scrape those out really, really well. And like I said, guys, if you do this stuff and you make sure that you're taking the extra maintenance precaution on things, it's going to last a really long time. And again, um, if you guys do not have a Roma strainer or Weston strainer and you want to um, do this by hand, you can get one of those cone mills, but um, you will be there a long time time uh, doing that. So totally up to you. Um, you know, even with this Weston strainer, I have broken the shaft inside there and I, you know, I have three extra ones. It's from an off brand but they work great. So, I mean, there are parts available for it too as well. So, okay guys, so if you see in there, I still have a few I'm gonna work on, but that's the best tip to make sure that your screens are always staying clean, okay? Now I'm gonna shut this down and I'm gonna come back once I have everything ready to start canning. All right guys, so we're ready to start making the jelly. So I just wanna go over my recipe with you. So this is Sure Gel Black Raspberry Jelly Recipe. I get this at uh, food and family my food and family .com. It's by craft. That's who makes sure gel So basically I just go off of these recipes and since I had seven cups for instance I went and did all the math and then I uh, Basically adjusted it to my seven cups of raspberries So basically this recipe calls for four and a half cups prepared juice one box sure gel fruit pectin Which is equivalent to five tablespoons We'll go over that in a minute. One half teaspoons butter or margarine. The reason why we're putting the butter or margarine in, in there is to basically, you can kind of get like a foam on the top of that and this is to just help prevent that. Um, and six and a half cups sugar measured in a separate bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna go over that with you. So basically here I have my seven cups of raspberry juice and basically doing the math, I end up with about 10 and a fourth cup sugar and I ended up with eight tablespoons pectin um and then just a like three quarter teaspoon butter i did a little bit more but it'll be fine because basically with butter they say you know it makes it spoil um you know if you don't put butter in your jelly it'll last over a year they say you know if it you put butter in there it could last you know 
just at like one year or whatever, but uh, I've never ever had an issue with it. So anyways, but that's the reason what, what butter is for. So basically with your fruit pectin. Now one box of pectin right now is running about $4 at the store. This bulk bag of pectin here, um, even when I bought it, it's a five pound bag. It was like $20. So my suggestion to you guys is again, if you're going to get your own berries and can them, we just can't end up with exactly four and a half cups of prepared juice. You're going to get what you get. So instead of letting some of that go to waste and frustrating yourself or letting pectin go to waste, because now you've opened up two um, boxes and you basically had to portion out, you know, eight tablespoons all together or whatever. Um, this is just obviously to save money and just to basically actually can jelly like somebody that's doing it with their own berries and all of that this is the way to go um but yeah like i said if you guys have like a bulk amish store around where you live that is definitely the place that i suggest to get your canning spices and your fruit pectin because i am not kidding you can do it for pennies on the dollar so anyways anyways i just wanted to um also reiterate Basically our jelly is literally four ingredients. We have raspberry juice, we have sugar, we have pectin, and we have butter. So basically from here, we just go ahead, I've got my big 20 quart stock pot here. Um, I'm not gonna use my eight quart for this because I have quite a bit of jelly I'm gonna use here and I don't wanna take the chance of it boiling up so high it ends up burning me. And I do have my eight quart, uh, little stock pot here though that I'm going to hot water bath the jelly in it. I have a little trivet on the bottom to keep the jars off the bottom and I have a little bit of white vinegar in this water so that way it's not going to get any water marks on your jar and they're going to come out squeaky clean. So that's basically we're going to do the hot water meth hot water bath method and that's how I do my jelly and um, so we'll go over that and then I have 18 prepared jars here that are clean and they're ready to go. Um, I probably only going to use about 13, 14 of them, but I have 18 to be safe. And I also have these one piece jelly lids with the safety button. I will leave, and these are also, you know, all washed up and clean and ready to go. So I will leave a link in the bottom of my, um, in my comments or whatever on my video that shows where I get the lids. And I'm going to put the Sure Gel recipe on there. And then I'll also even add that Weston, uh, Roma Weston, you know, same brand strainer. Also, guys, I did want to point out, I said I had that one for about 15 years. And it just dawned on me in the video. I actually um, had a, a Victoria one, but it didn't have a motor that went with it. So back in the day, then I gave that to my friend that when he was doing tons of tomatoes and she had no idea about it and was just in heaven and then I bought this one so I probably only had this one for about eight or eight or so years so anyways basically this is what we want to do with the jelly we want to take our fruit juice and we want to pour it into our stock pot and I'll go ahead and scrape that with a ladle here once to get off camera I'm not going to waste time on that and then we go ahead and we take our pectin and we dump that in there and our butter get that in there and then i've got my big old spoon and we're going to stir that around and we're going to bring this to a boil so i'm going to go ahead and bring this to a boil and then that's when we're going to add our sugar but i'm going to be back and i'll bring this to a boil and then we'll go to our next step all right guys so this fruit juice pectin and butter mixture is coming to a boil here I apologize i can't really get a good picture without the steam Okay, so now that's to a boil. So now what we wanna do is just go ahead and pour in our sugar. And then we just wanna stir that around in there. And then we wanna bring this back to a boil. And then after that, we wanna do a full rolling boil for one minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in here. And then I'll come back on once it starts coming to a boil, okay? All right, guys, so now this is to a boil, and this is to a boil, as you can see, that is not affected by stirring it. So it's still ro a rolling boil here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my timer for one minute, and I'm just going to continue to stir here. So I apologize for the minute of stirring, but I just kind of want to let you guys see what it looks like. I am so excited for this jelly. It is my absolute favorite. It smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. Literally, I don't care how much poison ivy or snakes or whatever is there, I am going to get to the black raspberries. 
So one summer I was pregnant with my son and my husband and I even got into it because he said I wasn't going to pick black raspberries. So I apologize here. My husband just got home. The dog was barking. All right, guys, 19 seconds. All right. Just about ready here. So yeah, as you can see, this is why I did not use that smaller pot. It kind of blips up. Okay, so go ahead and turn your timer off, shut your burner off, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat here. It's back there, I'm just gonna kind of let it come down just a little bit, still kind of bubbling there. Okay, so then over here, this is what I do. So I actually take my eight cup Pyrex liquid measure glass liquid measuring cup. Make sure it's glass. Now this is even oven safe, so it can withstand the heat. And what I do is I pour the jelly into there, and then I also pour it into my four cup one. This is actually the one that I'm gonna pour from into the jars. But um, let me go ahead and get it poured in there and I'll show you guys the next step. So I went ahead and I poured that in the eight cup one and the four cup one. So it actually looks like I will get about 12 cups of jelly. And then here, this big stock pot, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start filling that with water right away. Um, I actually, once I'm done pouring stuff off, I actually let it soak in here to get all this jelly off. So yeah, you definitely want to start soaking your stuff, especially with this raspberry because it is very, very sticky. So I'm just going to do that. And then what I do here, here, let me pause this real quick. All right, guys, I'm still letting that fill. But what I do here, as you can see, this is kind of the foam that gets on the top. And as it sits here, I don't want it to sit it too long, so I want to start getting it in the jars. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start scraping that foam off. And I'm just going to get as much as it off, as it off that I can because we do not necessarily want this in our jars. I'm not saying I've never made jelly that it hasn't been in there before, but if I can get it off, I like to get it off. So, And if you ever get jelly from somebody and there's a, there's a little froth on there, do not worry about it. It is perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt you one bit. But if I did not use the butter, this would have been a lot worse. So, yes. And as it sets up a little bit too, it's easier to get off. But I'm going to try to get this stuff all ladled up. And I'm going to let that sit just a little longer. So as you can see, this one here, it's a little smaller. So it came off just a little bit easier. Because it's a cooling already a little faster because it's smaller. And just try to get the last of that out. Now, as this boils too, it'll kind of boil back out of it, but that's pretty good. I'm going to let this sit here and go ahead and shut this down. Okay, guys, so that's pretty good. Okay, and then over here, I had this kind of boiling. I'm going to make sure that it's back up and boiling. Had a boiling and I shut it back down. Okay, so I'm going to start with my four cup one and I got all that foam off there and I'm going to come over to my jars and I am literally just going to gently pour it into the jars. And as you can see, just take your time. Um, if you do this right, and just take your time and fill this up. One, you don't need a funnel. And two, you won't have any drips anywhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go through. And I'm just going to do that. And I pour the big one then into this small one. Like I said, I just go ahead and I take my time. Looks like it was about 12 cups. So I should I know I'll for sure at least get 12 jars. I might end even end up with a 13. We'll see how this pours in there. So yeah, okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue pouring all of these. And I'll see you back when I get them all poured and we're ready to start putting the lids on.
All right, guys, and look, it is all poured in. I do have just a little bit of foam on the top, but like I said, hopefully that'll boil out. If not, it's no big deal. Um, I did end up with 13 jars, which is perfect, and I got them at a good fill height. I probably could have filled them up just a little bit more, but it is totally fine. So basically, I'm going to just take a wet paper towel, and I'm going to go ahead and go around these rims just to be safe i don't think i have one even one little blip on them but i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then basically with our lids we want to just basically i'm gonna go ahead while they're standing here and i'm just gonna put them on to where they're finger tight and then i'm going to take my towel and grab the bottoms and then crank the bottoms on okay so i'll see you back here why once i got them finger tight all right, guys, I got these on finger tight and I just have a towel and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the bottom and I'm just going to um, get these on tight. OK, you want them super tight. You don't want them cranked down to where like your husband's cranking them down, but get them on there tight. OK. All right, guys, so I got all these lids on and I'm going to go ahead and basically my little hot water bath canner here can fit um, six of these jars in there total. I'm going to do two batches of four. And then I'm going to do one batch of five. So I'm going to start with the four first because my water's a little bit higher. And I'm going to do the other batch of four and then I'll end with the batch of five. That way it'll raise it up and hopefully I won't have to add any water, okay? So I just basically took my jar lifter. I don't know if you saw that or not. And I just grabbed the jar and then I just dropped them in. And then I'll lift them the same way or I'll lift them out the same way. And then I'll go ahead and I'll grab my lid. I'll put that on. I want to make sure that inside there comes to a boil. So um, before I start my timer, so basically I'm going to run these for 15 minutes. I know they're half pint jars and you could run them for five minutes, you know, what everybody says. But, you know, I just run my jelly for 15 minutes and that way I am I feel good about it. I know my jars got good and sterilized. Everything got good and sterilized and um, then I'm done. So anyways, I'm going to run this for 15 minutes and I'm going to go ahead and stop this camera and I will see you guys when I get the last batch out of the canner, okay? Guys, this last batch is all done. I'm going to go ahead and turn my timer off, shut my burner off. I'm going to go ahead and grab this lid. I'm going to go ahead and set, I'm going to go ahead and set this lid on my trivet there. That way it's not directly down on the stove top. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to grab... My jars, one at a time here. Looking through the camera head there, that's not as easy. And I just basically lift them out. I turn them to the side, try to get any excess water out. And then just set them here on my towel with the rest of them. And so yeah, it's just turn here. And then just set. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest out here. I got all 13 out. These last five I just got out. I just want to go ahead and put a towel on the top and make sure that I got all the water off of them. And anyways, I just let them cool until these buttons are popped down. Um, if, if they are like to where you feel like they're completely cooled, you know, tomorrow and the button's still up, go ahead and push it down. Because like some of my one piece lids like this one, sometimes you do have to push it down. And if it doesn't stay down, then that means it's not sealed. But if it does stay down, it's sealed. So um, anyways, guys, I'm going to let these cool. I'm going to let the safety button pop on them, let them seal. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label them tomorrow. So I will bring this back up tomorrow once they're all labeled. And then I will go over some different recipes and stuff that I actually use for the jelly. So we just don't eat the jelly. I put them in so many things. Um, also, I just want to go over with you guys again. I will be putting links in the comments of this video where I buy um, the different things that I have. I will also want to reiterate, this is not just for black raspberries, this method. This is for any berry, you know, strawberry, blackberry, red raspberry, blackberry, um, mulberry but uh the only thing is i will be doing a different recipe for mulberry because the myfoodandfamily.com does not have a mulberry recipe so i will add as many different links below as i can for the different berries you know for this method um also if you're having something with a pit like i said go ahead and check out my um sour cherry jelly video um that'll give you details for how to juice anything with a pit so anyways i'll see you guys tomorrow when i get these labeled all right guys it's the next morning and all of the jelly is cooled down it is set up 
and I have them all labeled. So guys, in the comments, I will go ahead and I will um, add these two and a half inch Avery round labels. I'll add where I buy them at. It's typically Amazon. I'll put a link in there for that. Also, I'll put a link in there for Avery.com, the design and print area. Basically, you'll just have to sign up for that. It's free software, and you can go ahead and use their templates to design whatever labels that you want for your jelly. Um, and like I said, I'll also leave a link for the one-piece lids. Typically, I'll leave a couple of them where I can buy them at and um, where I buy them at, where you guys can buy, buy them at. Some are out of stock right now, so you might have to go between the two. And then also I'm going to leave a recipe for black raspberry jelly, for red raspberry jelly, for strawberry jelly, and also for blackberry jelly. Um, this, this re these principles are the same exact for all of them, but with the different recipes and the different flavors in each berry, their recipes are going to um, vary, you know, especially for how they set up and whatever else. But uh, yeah, and then also I just want to touch base with you guys real quick, a lot of things that you can do with your jelly. So I don't just give this jelly away and just eat it on toast or or whatever. I mean, I also cook these into recipes. You can cook them into any like bars. Like if you guys go ahead and look up like a good cherry bar recipe and instead of adding the cherry pie filling and you put jelly in there instead, like um, typically one recipe is like four of these, one big jelly roll pan of them. Um, if you go ahead and add that instead of that, instead of um, the pie filling, those are awesome. You know, you can go ahead and make cold pies with these, which is typically just cream cheese and the jelly, which um, <clears throat> I'll have a, I will have a video on there that you guys can go ahead and watch. It'll be after July 4th, 2021. So as long as it's after that time, you can go ahead and look at my channel and then you can see my video on there and how I make that. So also, yeah, um, so I'll have that cold pie. I'll be making the, the kind of different jelly bars. Um, there's so many things that you guys can incorporate this jelly into. I mean, if you like Jell-O poke cake, for ex example, you know, go ahead and make a cake in a nine by 13 pan. Take one cup of water and put it on the stove to boil and add one cup of jelly and then go ahead and dissolve that jelly in there. And then once your cake's out of the oven, poke it with a fork and pour that over the top. Let it cool in the refrigerator, you know, um, for quite a few hours, you know, let it cool down to where it's completely cold and then go ahead and top that with Cool Whip. So there's tons of things, you know, you guys can bake these into cookies. You can make those stained glass cookies. There is just so many things. Just use your imagination and I promise that you will not be disappointed in as many things as you can find to do with this jelly. So anyways, guys, like always, I appreciate you watching. I plan on having tons more videos. My next video will be mulberry jelly, which is basically the same principle as this black raspberry, but uh, it's a little bit different um, recipe. It's from a different website. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through that with you guys. But again, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you guys more with lots more videos. Thank you.